Hey, this is Jamie from Caps Computers, and today I got the Rocket Rios TKL Pro keyboard here to review. It's a mechanical keyboard using the 10 keyless design. Now, I gotta say, this is the first time I've used a 10 keyless design because, well, I'm kind of attached to my number pad. The number pad over here, I've used it extensively as a data doing data entry work. So, in my day to day, when I use numbers, I don't actually use a number pad, number keys up here, I actually use the number pad. But, in my experience, I've actually realized that I've used the number pad a lot less than I think I do. It was a bit of a challenge trying to get into this 10 key list design. It took me about three days to stop reaching into the number pad zone or freaking out when I hit the arrow keys and I realized that the keyboard was ending. As a smaller version of the Rocket Rios, it is missing the number pad and it's also missing the macro keys over here. You still have the same thumb macro keys from the Rocket Rios, but you're going to go six less here. Like the other Rocket Rios, the bigger version, this area right here is the easy shift zone. It means when you press the easy shift button, this entire zone can be macro to a secondary function. For me, this is actually a brilliant godsend because I've got a bit of a tiny hand problem. I can't actually hit the six key when I'm using WSAD, so when I'm playing MMOs like Guild Wars or World of Warcraft, I can only use from one to five and anything about two keys from wherever my fingers are sitting. By using the easy shift key, this turns it into any secondary function, which gives me a lot more macro space to use. Now overall, this is a very solid keyboard. It comes in four Cherry MX type switches. You can either choose from brown, black, red, or blue, depending on your preferences, whether you like a loud keyboard, a quiet keyboard, a very sensitive keyboard, or one that takes a lot of force to press down. And it also comes in a buttload of languages, whether you speak Turkish, German, Japanese, Chinese, you're probably going to find a language setting that Rocket makes this keyboard available in. Now, each of these keys are LED per key controllable, which means that the driver software can turn each key on, off, and on, off and on, on its own. The amount of options with this LED keyboard is insane. I can press the left shift key and I can set certain keys to turn on, certain keys to turn off. And the same goes with all the other modifiers. You've also got a whole bunch of really neat LED effects like the fade effect, which turns off slightly after you press it, or if your computer has disabled all the LEDs, it turns actually on when you press it for a split second, and some other ones like Ripple and Starry Night. Now all these LED effects are cool and all, and it can be really ha handy when you're using a lot of macros. However, the driver setup for Rocket is a little bit intense. It's a lot of things, to a lot of different options flying at your face at once, and it did take me about 20 minutes to just figure out the LED functions. I would have really appreciated some sort of YouTube tutorial because it would have made my life a lot easier and I could have spent more time getting things exactly how I want it instead of spending 20 minutes trying to figure out how to use it in the first place. Now luckily the macro features is a lot easier to use. It's very straightforward and it's very quick to bind things. There are, there are a bunch of games that um, preloaded for macros, but these games are really dated. I mean, my god, there was Command & Conquer 3 there. I know everyone's trying to fit, pretend that Command & Conquer 3 never existed, but come on. Let's move up to at least something a little newer. Now, overall, I really like this keyboard. It's hefty, it's compact, and it's pretty ergonomic. I would have preferred some minor tweaks to it, such as getting this keyboard, the wrist rest, a little higher but it is very minor. This will not move no matter how much you are typing or slamming on the keyboard thanks to these really generous sized rubber foot rests. There's also some cable channeling to adjust wherever you want your cables off so it's not really just a giant mess on your desk. At $139.99 US dollars, this is an expensive keyboard. However, most key mechanical keyboards are not cheap. This is actually in line with other mechanical keyboard price-wise. And not to mention, this is rated to survive 50 million key presses, so you're probably going to go through $139 worth of rubber dome keyboards in that period of time. Now, I'm not quite ready to give up the 10 keyless design, give up my regular keyboard for the 10 keyless design. However, if I do ever choose to use this 10 keyless design, this keyboard is probably going to be it. It is a solid keyboard, and as much as I rag on how terrible the drivers are, they're not actually as bad as I'm making them out to be. It just is not very user, new user friendly. 
So in the end, I give this keyboard 9 capsules out of 10. If you want to check out more about this keyboard, you can check out our unboxing video, which you can find over here, or you can scroll on down and check out our full review. So that's it for today. I'm going to catch you on the next video review on Capsule Computers. I hope you have a great day.